Wargaming Recon here with another one of our pandemic coffee breaks. Today is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020, and I am on my coffee break from work. Just like those old episodes of Are You Being Served? That incredible and famous British comedy series, I am at coffee or tea break. I got my beverage here, my Tim Hortons mug, tea, Earl Grey, hot cream, and Splenda. Ooh. I hope you are joining us here. If not alive, then uh, maybe later on, you might be watching us on YouTube. We upload this after the fact to YouTube. It also stays on Facebook on our page here, Wargaming Recon, and you can watch us at any time. So we have some things we want to talk about. First of all, I want to say that pursuant to yesterday's episode where we did our live stream, uh, we had mentioned that Warlord Games was still selling stuff. And I expressed that I couldn't understand how they could do that because how could they be in the warehouse when the Prime Minister basically put everyone in lockdown? So mere minutes after doing the live stream, uh, got an email from Warlord saying, well, actually, no, we got to be shut. So they're completely shut. Games Workshop is completely shut. All the places are completely closed, really, is what it is. Perry Miniature is completely shut down. They're still sculpting and painting and doing stuff from home, but uh, you order from them, you're not going to be able to get stuff. Uh, so that's just how it is. Here in the States, more um, places are going into lockdown. Massachusetts is not. It's a strong advisory, so we are still here. Businesses are still doing stuff, but you can't be open as a business if you're not essential, except if you are... A mail order business so that counts so you can still get stuff by ordering from the hobby bunker uh which is a great gaming store just outside of Massa uh outside of boston massachusetts so you can order things from there matt is fulfilling orders and you can do that and help out their my favorite local historical gaming store so you can get all sorts of stuff from them or if you have to order online as well Many places are still doing sales and businesses, and we've talked about some sales yesterday. I can't remember if I mentioned that the Wargaming Company has 25% off. That's a great deal, and especially because you can buy their Knock trees. So they're a distributor of Knock. They are a German company, make great trees. We've talked about them a lot on our podcast. And one of the things I love to do with them is I love to get their trees. They're really a great deal, and... Uh, Personally, one of my favorite um, purchases for gaming as a um, scenery. And then I got Jorg from Thinks in the Basement to make a regular basis, which he now has on his website, thingsfromthebasement.com. So I can, um, well, do you know what? I'm going to show you what they look like, but uh, which means I'm going to have to step away. But I want to say what I do is I like to use a regular basis and put the trees on. So I want to be right back to get that and do it. But while I'm doing that, I want you to think and to let me know what is your favorite piece of scenery or terrain? Hey, Scott, nice to see you. Good morning. What's your favorite piece of scenery or terrain on the tabletop? Whether it's miniatures, whether you're in a board game, whether you're doing a role-playing game and you're using miniatures and, um, doing things like that. Uh, what's your favorite piece of terrain on the table? So think of that. And if you're watching live, put it in the comments uh, here, or even if you're watching on YouTube, put it in the comments below. I want to be right back because I'm getting those trees in the base because I want to show all of you. And I didn't, didn't think of it until right now. Take me two shakes of a lamb's tail. Really, I'm going to be super fast. Just watch. Okay, as promised, I am back. Um, so I hope you were thinking about what your favorite piece of terrain or scenery is for the table. I just had to go and get those trees I was talking about that I like to get from the Wargaming Company. So let me show you some on the regular basis. So these are knock trees. These are evergreens. They're beautiful trees. And when you got, get them, they actually come with a little base. Uh, that uh, David from the Wargaming Company does. So you can put them on there. But then I asked, like I said, York Bender from Things in the Basement, 
to make a regular basis. So they're just kind of a cool design. You can see there's a bunch of different options. And then what I do is I take it and I cover the whole base with Vallejo black mud, which I got from the Hobby Bunker, actually. You can get it online. You can get it from all sorts of places. Your local game store probably has it. And then I made a mixture of Woodland Scenics black um, fine turf, I believe it's called. And it's like light green fine turf. Hi, Kate. Nice to see you. Uh, good morning. Hope everything's well in your neck of the woods and the kids are doing well as we deal with this pandemic. So while the thick mud, uh, black mud still wet, I shake on all my ballast and all that kind of stuff and get it on. So that way it can look like this. And this is going to be used to swap out. This was an ingenious idea I had to duplicate uh, what I do for trees. So that way I can actually move units and I can just swap them out. Uh, Scott, you stay safe too. Be healthy. Be well. Um, hope you have a great day. So you can swap these out for the ones with the trees. Now, if you're putting actual trees on, I put some white glue, or you could use super glue. I've done both. Super glue might be better um, to the base, and you glue it on. And then also, I like to put little extra touches here. So these are Woodland Scenics branches and things like that, and put them on. And then you'll see I have some areas where um, it's a little barren near the tree branches that have fallen down things like that nathan good morning to you nate good morning rob thank you for joining us today on our live stream here the pandemic coffee live stream here so talking about some great knock trees you can get them 25 percent off from the wargaming company which i suggest you check out they're a sponsor of, of the podcast too and um so you get the trees here and i like to put them on the bases and then when you're done you get this whole neat little look and I'm really proud of these. Uh, it's a stupid thing, but I love them. I love this kind of stuff. So much so that I made a whole bunch of these, right? And I made the stuff that I'm going to swap out so that if units go in, I can just plop this down. And it takes a place of the actual ones with the trees in it. But actually, I have a bunch more irregular bases. So I got to make more of these, but I think I've run out of trees. So I'm going to have to buy more from the Wargaming Company. Uh, thankfully, they have that 25% off sale because conventions are kaput for right now. So that's one of the things that are going on. Um, and actually, speaking of just stuff going on around, uh, it was interesting. My uh, youngest child had to go to the doctors for just a regular uh, checkup. And so my wife brought her because uh, I am in a high-risk category and I don't want to be out and about with stuff. And so uh, they at the doctor's office, she had to go into like a special door with the uh, our youngest daughter the baby it's not really baby anymore she's like a toddler but uh go in and there's like a nurse station there they only let you in one at a time and the nurse like quizzes you on all like the um questions have you been outside the country do you have a fever do you have a cough what are your basically they're checking for coronavirus symptoms right um nathan uh i'm glad trees are in your q2 the wargaming company check them out 25 percent off uh really you got to pick them up because knock trees are amazing. Just don't buy them out because I need some too. And um, so the nurse like worked you through, did the whole thing, and then got to go to registration. And they, they were really very segmented with how you could be set up. And so they're taking it very seriously. And then when they actually got up to the doctor's office, uh, it's only like one parent allowed in at a time, which is great because I wasn't going anyway. And then like the pediatrician comes in, my wife said, in full gear, like, you know, you see in the movies. So with like the special respirator mask and the goggles and the face, face shield and like the full outfit or whatever and the gloves and all the kind of stuff because they're being careful and doing like the whole exam and stuff. And my wife said, you know, it's kind of jarring to see that because it's not something you see every day, right? So it's, it's very different. But I really appreciated knowing at one because I was glad that they were all safe. And two, to show that even though this is just a smaller doctor's office here near us, that how seriously they're taking it and all these precautions that they're doing. And if they're doing that here, they're doing it elsewhere. So um, that just made me feel really good <laughs> to know that. And uh, hopefully things like I happen like that in your area and that you are also feeling good. Mm. Like my Earl Grey tea. Uh, I have a couple hobby things I want to talk about and share with all of you. 
So uh, going back to the pandemic coffee break from March 20th, when we had put it up on YouTube and actually got a comment from Ivor uh, Cogdell, who says, hi, Big J, it might be better to lighten the inside of the backboard to show the details better once the front covers are on. And I believe Ivor is talking about the outhouse. <laughs> and of course, by now, I've actually glued on the front. But uh, if you saw the live stream yesterday, and if not, please go watch it. Uh, you'll notice that in that live stream, I was showing the inside here. And I put some of the... Um, uh, Stir I was going to call it a ghrelin, whatever, but that's not the right name. Um, Sterling mud in there because they ran out of toilet paper. Uh, and so stuff got everywhere. And I didn't highlight it, but he's right. I should have dry brushed it. It would have been a better idea. But right now, I don't really want to break the door off to put shade on that and, and do it. Uh, but I did make some progress. I did some basing. So I put the mud around the edges of the base. I touched up some of the edges. So one of the things I've noticed with Jorg's kits is because of the connection points, no matter how fine I cut them off, and usually, to be honest, I wiggle them <laughs> until they come apart. Uh, so the connection point is still there. Uh, and because it's wood, it gets a little fuzzy and it sticks out a little bit. So you got to get a hobby knife and kind of pare it down. But then it changes the color because it's showing the MDF or HGF, as it were, uh, from the inside. So then what I do is I like to use some just good, cheap, but really good quality folk art paint. It's craft paint. It does the job really, really well. Because I was using brown uh, stuff here, I'm using the real brown. This was dirt cheap. Uh, you could probably get it online. Uh, I got it from uh, Michael's, I think it is. But, of course, you can't go into a Michael's now or whatever your local craft store is. But I got some of that and just touch it up so things like on the middle of the corners um and on the bottom of the bases so i did that for all the pieces and now that that's dry i'm going to go around and finish dry brushing this thing and i might put a, a tuft too on i don't know if i should put a tuft hey pete how are you um pete says ever use an outhouse no but uh my father had uh because he's from kansas and they had outhouses when he was growing up and based on what he told me, it's no fun thing to do in the middle of the night. And I would be worried about snakes and spiders and bugs. I would say burn it down and go poo or pee in, in a field. <laughs> Just be on your way. Um, Pete, have you ever <laughs> used an outhouse? And is this a good representation? Because look at this outhouse. You guys should talk about outhouses on the Mythwits. Mythwits came back actually for a special episode and get some stuff going on. So check them out on Facebook. Uh, Mythwits is a really good podcast. Uh, they do a great job. So that's the outhouse. And then I've been working on some more things from the basement stuff. More fences. A lattice fence. So this is really cool. This is a gate for it with a high section. And Jorg is way smart. No surprise there. Because the gate opens. Look. It opens part way to the front. It's not really supposed to go forward, but look. So I love that there's these little extra touches. You could glue it in place if you wanted. I would not. Um, Pete says the outhouse is really good representation. So way to go, Jorg. Good job on your outhouse. But unfortunately, my House of Free Miniatures Barbarian is a little too big for the outhouse. So she can't get in. So she has to go. She's just not to scale. She's going to have problems trying to go in. No matter how bad she has to use the restroom, you're out of luck, lady. But that's okay. They're out of toilet paper. So go somewhere else. And you'll be just fine. Uh, so the gate's really cool. Uh, I would highly recommend the lattice fence for anyone. And like I said, you could glue it in place if you wanted to. But I don't think you need to. So this is going to get some dry brushing. And I did some... You know, work with the sterling mud again. I love sterling mud. It's probably one of my favorite things right there on the bottom. And I noticed an interesting thing. So the lattice fence, Peter says Asian outhouse. <laughs> it's very Shogun. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched the miniseries Shogun or read the book, but it's very Shogun. <laughs> Get to fertilize that rice somehow, right? Um, so the lattice fence comes with high sections and smaller sections. 
and the lower ones, which are here are really nice, right? And they come with, and this is a tip for all of you, they come with supports that are U-shaped. You can't tell as it falls. Um, there we go, U-shaped. And not Y-shaped, if Y was a weird looking Y. Uh, so you put this into the base, and then it holds up the uh, thing like so. But there's not enough of them. And I was like, what a s second, what's going on here? So it turns out when, and we're bringing it back to the gate, in the gate section of the sprue, there's actually, dun, 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 do you see them? One, two posts here. And so they don't look the same as the other ones. And I thought, oh, well, you know, the, hey, Jamie, thank you for joining us. I thought, well, I must be missing pieces because they don't look the same. So what's going on? And after talking with Jorg, hey, Glenn, thank you for joining us. Um, after uh, talking with uh, Jorg, he's like, no, go look on this brew. And you get them right there. So you can use these and you can do it however you want so that you can either do one of the Y ones and one of these or both of, both of these, whatever you think. Uh, but there they are. So i got to pop those out and touch them up and then I can get the basing done. And then we'll do a ton of dry brushing all together is my plan because uh, why just do dry brushing in small batches? I love to use Sylvaneth Bark from um, Citadel Games Workshop uh, Colors. So you can go ahead and do that. And I got a lot of brown coming out. <laughs> just a lot of pieces that are going to be brown. So I can do a quick dry brush and kind of get the edges, lighten it up a little bit probably touch up the mud a little bit which you can't see because I'm putting my finger there and let's get my phone so you can actually get some definition on that because we had to do this yesterday too you can kind of see a little bit and we'll get pictures up online at one point um, that's just me dropping it and catching it <laughs> um, so the mud's really nice it has some good texture to it it's something that's fun to use hi Mickey nice to see you thank you for joining us this morning and um, you get some really good results from it so we got a lot of fences going on after the lattice fences are done um, and all the stuff is assembled then I think we're moving on to um, we have two options. So actually, I'd like to know what you guys and ladies think. We have, if I pull up the stuff, come on. I'm going to thingsthebasement.com. So these are for the Russian village. Um, we have irregular wooden fences that make me think of like the fences from Tom Sawyer when he's getting kids to whitewash them. And then we also have, are those the last ones? No, and then we have one other one. So we have those, and then we have the um, picket fences, which, no, actually, I, I talked to you about picket fences. So we just have the um, irregular wooden fences to do, and then we'll have to find something else to work on, but that's to talk about for another day, I guess. So we have those going on. Um, exciting news. I've booked Henry Hyde to come on the show, so he'll be on the podcast, and you can um, hear all the cool stuff he has to say. For Reels Monday, this coming Monday is when the new podcast episode comes out. Gordon Firemark is a lawyer. We're talking about copyright, trademark, and intellectual property as it pertains to 3D printing and recasting. So you can listen to that and enjoy that. I'm trying to think what else we have. Um, we talked about all the places that are shut. Um, we could talk more about outhouses, but I don't think we need to. Let's, Pete, do you want to talk about outhouses? What do you know about outhouses? <laughs> What's your favorite outhouse? It's a question I never thought I'd ask on a live stream. What is your favorite outhouse? That's just weird and bizarre, but maybe people have one. Um, really, those are all the really cool things that are going on. Uh, and uh, I will say that um, there's been a lot of activity on Twitter lately from people. So if you're not on Twitter, you might want to go on there and check out because people are working on all sorts of stuff and doing amazing things. And actually there's also on Facebook, there's a special um, 
I'm trying to think of the right word, just lockdown-ish painting group um, that Adam from our community had uh, got me involved with. Uh, so Rob says, World War II fans, online lunch and learn at the 11, 11 Central Standard Time today. So Rob, how would people get access to that um, online lunch and learn at 11, I presume 11 a.m. Central? So that's noon. That comes up in half an hour. Um, so Glenn says that he has an outhouse at the fire lookout on Keystone Peak on the Nine Mile Divide in West Montana. So Glenn, is this outhouse, do you have a heart cut out in the door of your outhouse? And if not, I think you should add one. You should make it match what Jorg sells. Um, so Rob says, to join them for a free online lunchbox lecture, Robert M. Satino with a doctorate is presenting Recovering from Disaster Pearl Harbor and After, 11 a.m. Central Time. Watch on their Facebook. Love, um, it says he says Google the World War II Museum website. So, if anyone's interested, you can Google that. And, Rob, do you know is that going to be safe for people to watch after if they're not available live? And Glenn says that he has a star in his door, so I think you need a new door, Glenn, with a heart because you're put a heart. And apparently, he put a little whole, whole door and cut out here for a mouse. Do you have a cut out for a mouse or a bird to get in? What if they have to go potty too? These are important questions. People want to know. Um, Glenn says it's an old FS station from the 30s. And Rob actually has a link to the uh, Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com slash WWII Museum, that's where the Lunch and Learn will be. Online Lunchbox Lecture with Dr. Robert M. Satino. So you can check that out. And on Thursday, March 26th, uh, you can watch a movie with the Mythwits. Go to facebook.com slash Mythwits to see the event. Vote for the movie. Sign up. I will be voting for it, and I'll be watching some of it. I can't promise I'll be watching all of it because I've been going to bed extra early lately. It's really crazy. Uh, it's weird. I'm well-rested now, uh, and my mental health is really good. <laughs> I was actually thinking about it, um, the fact that Huzzah is coming up in May, or whether or not it happens, I don't know. But that it'll mark the third huzzah since I've been diagnosed with anxiety and clinical depression. And just the journey I've been on has been, there's been downs. There's been some really bad downs, like really, really bad ones. But there's been some really, really good ups, like amazing ups. And so things are, we're, we're trending upward. We're, we're doing well. But if you or someone you know is not, uh, please get them the help that they need or get the help that you need. And um, check out our many podcast episodes about anxiety and depression and mental health. We've had a bunch about all that kind of stuff. So you should check that out. Um, Pete says rest and mental health is good, helps the immune system, and it does. So when you're locked in, quarantined, or just trying to stay away from everyone so you don't get a virus that's going to be not very good for you, uh, it can take a toll on your whole well-being. So one of the things is they say, this is something I try to do. Uh, uh, I work from home, right? So I'm trying to maintain a routine that's very similar to my work routine for when I would be at work in the office. And that would mean like getting dressed to work. So it doesn't seem like I am because I'm wearing this, but like I work behind the scenes, we get dirty. And so I try to stay cozy and down in my studio here where I'm doing work from home, it gets chilly. <laughs> so it's either put a space heater on uh, all the time or put this on. And I'm trying to be eco-friendly, so I, I wear this instead. Uh, but then it's also like, you know, I get dressed. I brush my teeth. Um, today I used extra conditioner in my hair, which is why my hair is a little extra crazy, but I realized it was extra flat. Uh, but like doing these things to take care of yourself. And I'm not one for exercise. I, I should be. But people are going out for walks or uh, they're moving home and uh, <laughs> workout equipment from the attics or garages into their home so they can do stuff like that. So you should do things like this and have a routine. Part of my routine is coffee break, which I spend with all of you and I'm happy to do it. I drink in my Earl Grey. Uh, it's a good thing. And I hope all of you have beverages that you really enjoy. Um, I wonder what routines you have that you're either creating as you're quarantined or in lockdown or uh, sheltering in place, as it were. 
uh, or what you're doing uh, or what ones you carried over from life before. <laughs> it feels like it. So I, I don't know if any of you have ever read any of those Left Behind novels or watch any of the movies and they're um, evangelical-ish uh, fictional stories about the end times when all the saved people ascend to the afterlife and everyone else is just left behind. Uh, and it feels like we're all left behind from something. <laughs> and there's like a before the tragedy and an after the tragedy. And so we're living post tragedy fallout kind of world. It just, I don't know. It feels funny to me. Uh, Nathan says he's cold in his basement to coffee and sweater and a hat. Oh, hat would be smart. Uh, but then people couldn't admire my beautiful hair that's turning more gray and silver and white with every day. Uh, I blame my children, actually, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, and Ethan says he's trying to keep his two-year-old, who's beautiful, I might add, in a routine. Uh, the older boys are watching her, and they're not used to it, so she's having snacks late and naps. That's okay, too. There's a new normal, and whatever we do is okay. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. But we're all trying and we're doing the best we can. So we need to remember that. And like I said yesterday, we have to be kind to ourselves. Be good not only to other people, but be good to yourself. And be aware that sometimes good enough is good. And that's okay. So I know that sounds all like new agey. Uh, it's something I would have like smacked myself for saying, I don't know, two years ago. <laughs> uh, but I really come around to some of this kind of stuff, and it helps me. Uh, maybe it helps you too. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but you got to do what you can do. And Pete, I don't know if this is on the list, but I kind of feel like Flash Gordon should be one of the movies for voting for the Mythwits. And I mean, it's a terrible, terrible movie. Just downright awful. But like, I feel like you kind of need to have it on there. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> That's just me. Uh, here at home, my wife's also working from home. And that's why we're doing today's live stream a little bit later. So I'm taking a later coffee break. I'm taking 11s and I am part Hobbit. Uh, at least I like to think I am. Maybe I'm not, but I, I feel like I'm part Hobbit. And so we have this routine where like I work in the studio doing all my work or whatever. Uh, and she works upstairs and our infant, our baby, she's not an infant anymore, but the baby is home. And so they're upstairs and they're doing whatever. But my wife's work is very flexible. So like she's able to like handle some snack times. And then uh, I take my lunch at noon. So then like I come up at noon and I give the baby her lunch and put her down for a nap. And then I have my lunch and then I come back to work. So like we're trying to like work out this routine. And the nice thing is I finish work before my wife. So like I'm done and then uh, my wife works a little bit later and our eldest is with my parents who are doing all the homeschooling stuff. And so just incredibly grateful for them. There's a lot of crap and I hate to say an unkind word like that, but there's a lot of crap out there where people are, are saying just mean things about um, baby boomers and just like, there's all this fighting and I, I hate it, but like, do you know what? They're people too. And they have a lot of, wealth of knowledge and experience and kindness and we should just try to be kind to one another and like my parents are doing incredible stuff and we wouldn't be able to do half of what we do without them so i'm just truly grateful for them and if any of you have parents or loved ones in your life who are of the baby boomer generation i, I hope you've been able to tell them how you feel about them and what they mean to you and if not uh maybe now's a good time to do it uh and um, I don't know, so our eldest will come back from homeschool at Nana and Papa's and I'll be there taking care of dinner and all that kind of stuff. So like we kind of have some of our routine the same, which is kind of cool. Uh, and Pete says that he wishes Flesh Gordon could be, but it's not on Netflix, that maybe he can swing it to do OBS. It's a, a streaming thing he could do and see if Facebook dings him. It says, quote, worth the risk if you ask me. Uh I guess we'll have to find something on Netflix. Way to make it hard, Pete. Thanks. Jeez. It makes you wonder, why isn't Flash Gordon on there? They have all sorts of crazy stuff on there. But they don't have Flash Gordon? I mean, Ming the Merciless passed recently. They can't just honor him and, and have it on there? It's like, what the heck? I'm very disappointed in Netflix. They should do better. Be better. Although I'm watching The Last Kingdom, so 
that's pretty cool too. And oh, actually, I learned an interesting thing. So because of the Last Kingdom and being all like in a Uhtred kind of uh, Bernard Cornwell last Saxon Chronicles kind of mood, I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to play Medieval 2 Total War on my computer. I have it on Steam. And I'll play it. You know, I haven't played it in a while, but I've, I've racked up a lot of hours. And so when I went to um, go ahead and play it, I got told, oh, no, I need to update to the new OS. I'm, I'm on a Mac. And so I'm like, I'm not updating to the new OS because I'm on High Sierra and the new one, I don't know what it's going to do. And I use programs that are older for podcasting <laughs> and they might not have been updated. So like, I can't play the game now and I'm really disappointed. I know first world problem, but when you're secluded here, these things matter. Um, and Nathan says, Outbreak is on Netflix. Good movie. Love it. Um, and the one thing I hate about Outbreak is it's supposed to have been the film version of The Hot Zone by Mr. Preston, which is a great book, one of my favorite books of all time. And it's not. The Motaba virus. And I, I actually, I like what Kevin Smith uh, did with um, the Clerks animated series. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. And he did an animated series of Clerks. And one episode deals with the Motaba virus and Outbreak. And it's just, it's really funny. And so he did a great job with it. But yeah, Outbreak is good. I've been watching that. Um, it, but I can't watch a lot of the stuff with my wife because things are just, they feel too raw for her so i was watching the kingdom which is a korean um feudal kind of asian thing but with what i think are zombies i'm not quite sure i haven't gotten that far enough yet but the king the emperor has this disease and no one sees him but i think there's like undead and there's like this plague that goes but it's beautifully done really well done and i'm watching it in its original korean um and I say Korea in Korean, it's South Korea. It's not, obviously not from the North, but like for me, there's only one Korea. It's South Korea. And maybe that's, I don't know, too um, combative to say, but like, I don't care. <laughs> it's tough. Get over it. Uh, but it's a good series. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not too far in it because there's a, a pandemic, there's a plague, and it's going and infecting people. And we have a pandemic going around now and people are coming out with this deadly virus so that's just kind of weird uh, so i don't know but people should check out the Mythwits and see what's going on there please check out the lunch talk on the world war ii museum facebook page dr satino is going to talk about recovering from disaster pearl harbor and after and I believe we've sent out all the Kickstarter rewards for people who've done the social media friend level, as long as you've actually done the backer uh, report survey thing. And if you haven't, please do. And so we're waiting on surveys for just a few other levels. But we're kind of going ahead and working on all that sort of stuff and getting things going. I'm working on things for the basement kits and just seeing how things are going. And my coffee break is over now. So thank you, everyone for tuning in for today's pandemic coffee break tomorrow we'll be at the normal time we're doing thursday um so it turns out that it, i can do thursdays now 10 30 a.m eastern standard time pandemic coffee break here at wargaming recon you can always check these out after the fact watch them either on our facebook page or you can go to youtube on our youtube channel and see them there and we also mention them on twitter so you can get at them if you're on Twitter and see stuff like that. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in today for the coffee break. We'll be back tomorrow. We're here Mondays through Fridays doing coffee breaks. It's weird. Uh, I will say I'm actually disappointed in all of you because nobody in any of these has told me what you're drinking for coffee break. I'm the only one drinking and that makes me a sad panda. So I've told you many times tea Earl Grey hot in my Tim Hortons mug with cream and Splenda. So I hope you all will tell me sometime what you're drinking as well. Ah, good tea. So be well, be safe, be healthy, be smart, stay at home. Please be kind to others and yourself and just try to do some good in this crazy world because life is messed up and I can't stress this enough. Listen to the experts, the scientists, the doctors. Listen to the people who know what they're talking about with this crazy pandemic. Not Karen on Facebook who says, well, if you use uh, eucalyptus essential oil, you will be fine. As long as you gargle with salt in the back of your throat, you won't get coronavirus. It's not true. 
listen to the experts. So there. <laughs> Thank you all. You know the drill. No matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you're spending in or thinking about an outhouse, and we thought about it and talked about it a whole lot more today than I ever thought I would ever talk about an outhouse. Um, know that you gotta... <laughs> Oh, Pete, I can't say that. <laughs> no, I can't. So, you know, you gotta, you have to, you need to, that's right, keep on gaming. <laughs> Bye, all.